hello everyone welcome to zarev game dev in this video we are going to create the square pass game in unity so this is another one simple hyper casual game and if you have been following the tutorials till now uh, this one is going to be easy and again we are going to create on top of the previous project cause uh, all the code we have done is optimized and we already understand that and the link to that project is in my github repository and the link to this current project will be in the description below and uh, let's start creating the game so we have empty unity project opened up nothing set up here first we are going to delete our scenes folder and we'll bring in our assets so the first asset we want to bring is uh, get our colors so uh, directly bring in the editor folder from the current uh, project and this would uh, set up all of the colors which are the blue red the uh, orange gray or whatever it is called and the uh, black transparent which will like uh, automatically change its color depending on the background and after that we'll bring in our assets from our previous project which was uh, disk dash and uh, the assets we are going to bring are prefab resources scenes and scripts so let's bring in that into our assets folder and it will automatically set everything up and after that we are going to change our project settings so the first thing we need to do is uh, let's go to our main menu so it will tell us to import text mesh pro and we'll do that and there's a warning for text mesh pro we'll uh, fix that up later and uh, let's go inside the build settings and let's close our asset store so let's remove the current scene and we need to switch our platform to android so it will take a couple of seconds and after we have changed our platform to android what we are going to do is disable the text mesh pro warnings in our player settings and uh, uh, we are not uh, using any prefabs so for our editor uh, let's just add the naming convention so we don't need to change anything for the player but uh, tool chain is turned off no need for that inside our settings let's disable the warnings and after that uh, it should also import our script execution order i don't know how it imports that but uh, this is going to be our script execution order even though it is inside our project settings it uh, by default uh, set up the script execution order when we imported the scripts and let's go inside editor and change the naming convention to under slash and after that for the time for smooth movements we'll set it up to 0 0.005 so it's around uh, 200 calculations per second and our project is small so it doesn't matter if it's large and let's also add our gameplay scene to the build so we have added both our scenes to the build our player settings is set up and next we are going to uh, set up our packages and remove those we don't need so if you have so many packages it may take like more compilation time visual scripting which is uh, always not needed uh, maybe it will reload it cause uh, inside the project assembly folder there are like all the dot whatever file extension is uh, they are all there so dot runtime and dot player so we are going to remove all of the packages that we don't need uh, you know, if you have a specific package of your editor don't try to remove that as I am using with Visual Studio uh, I am just having my Visual Studio package and also version control if you are creating your own project uh, uh, even if you are creating your own project I think it's only for plastic SCM and all similar types of uh, repo i am uh, uh, what was it used for yeah the project management or whatever you call it like github like frameworks test we are not doing any tests so we'll remove that but uh, if you are creating an app or something like that but we are not doing that so it doesn't matter so 
this are the finally all the five packages we are going to use the main are the 2d text mesh pro timeline and the ui timeline is for uh, particle effects we are using some of the particle effects and they are just simple when unity ui is always needed and as we are using our text mesh pro it's for its text and i think uh, i never tried to remove the unity ui developing user interfaces it is a game objects that uses components and the game view to arrange position and style user interfaces you cannot okay so i don't know what does it do but uh, most of our ui is in text mesh pro and i think for the images we'll need to have the unity ui cause it uses the positions anchors and or uh, everything else so that was our project setup and we should have a game ready so the first thing we are going to do is check if our current game is currently working because there is an error with the tags so it is working perfectly fine there are not any issues and we'll go to our main menu scene so we have our editor the first thing we are going to do is uh, set up our main menu so there not much to do here uh, we are just going to rename the title which is the square pass change our x aspect ratio to 16 is to 9 and our canvas is going to match the height so it is perfectly fine and we'll change its color to bright red similarly for all three of our buttons we are going to change our color to bright red so no changes in the main menu here the quit and the play both uh, work similarly and the sound is also perfectly set up now let's go inside our gameplay scene so inside our gameplay scene we'll first delete all four of our objects which are the move points and we'll delete our move point here also and let's hit delete and let's go inside our obstacle and we are going to delete both of them also here so both are single objects uh, this one is a block i mean a bar and our score is just a circle so first we'll start changing our player so our player is going to be positioned at the center position and its uh, size is going to be uh, 1.28 by 1.28 and our camera needs to have a reference resolution uh what was it let's just set it to 1920 by 1080 192 multiplied by 4 19.2 1920 by 1080 i don't know what resolution it was but uh, we'll see what we are going to use so 9.6 and we'll multiply 9.6 hmm. so we'll see what resolution it is later but uh, now we have our center let's set up our background first so it's going to have two images and they are going to be sprites and for the sprite we are going to use our block sprite and let's change uh, this filter mode to point and uh, its center is going to be at center and this one's also filter mode to point so our square it's uh, going to be positioned at negative 9.6 and its uh, color is going to be our transparent color and its size is going to be instead of simple 9.6 and we multiply it by 46.8 so 46.8 divided by 4 11.7 i mean it doesn't matter whatever its size is so currently it's looking bad uh it needs to be at the 
bottom so let's change it to 19.2 and you'll be able to see that our square is uh, perfectly aligned and let's rename this to left and we'll duplicate it again and we'll rename this to right which is going to be at our positive 9.6 and now it looks better and if we go inside our 18 is to 9 portrait i mean you can't see any differences but uh, actually uh, it is a little bit towards the inside so this is our background as it is a background its order in layer is going to be our furthest negative 5 we set it to 0 uh, if there is any objects at 0 both will create like rendering issues one may be uh, pushed on top and similarly instead of circle it's going to block and it is going to be sliced and instead of circle collider 2d we'll remove this component and we'll need to attach a box collider 2d which is going to be again sized at 1.28 by 1.28 so let's add it uh of our sprite renderer and our player uh it is going to be changes inside the scripts now let's start editing the shape of our obstacle and the score and before that for our particle system inside our texture sheet animation instead of circle we are going to use block and size over lifetime we are going to decrease it linearly emission is going to be 6.4 and start lifetime instead of 0 0.8 it's going to be 6.4 so this is going to be player for the changes are going to be inside the script now let's see how our score is going to look it's just going to be a simple circle and why the score script at the top so sprite renderer and still it is here only let's see if we can push it here yeah it doesn't matter so this is our score script again we are going to change it now let's see how our score looks currently right now it looks too bad so what we need to change first is uh, change this to circle and its size is going to be 1.28 by 1.28 and instead of a box collider 2d let's remove that component and we'll attach a circle collider 2d which is going to be set to a trigger so if we hit on edit we can see its bounds so it is also set up correctly now uh that's going to be our score similarly inside our obstacle uh we are going to need the box collider 2d but instead of block we are going to have bar our size is going to be 4.8 by 1.28 order in layer that doesn't needs to be any change let's change its size and box collider to match our current fit and similarly further changes are going to be inside our obstacle script so if we just uh, change the look first how it's going to look our game logic is not changed anywhere and we didn't change any major things so our player should move uh, like it was before and let's also change the color for our player so we have two colors so first one let's set it to blue the second one let's set it to red and the third one will set it to our that yellow gray yellow and uh, let's hit main menu and uh, we have not changed much things so as you can see our game is working as it was previously before but our obstacles and our just uh, the how they looks are changed so this is our current game
how it looks and particle system is also good we don't need to change anything and our score is also getting calculated calculated and our obstacle is also getting calculated now what we need to change first is uh, how we are going to spawn our obstacles which will be inside our game manager how the player is going to move and how our obstacle and scores are going to move and everything else is uh, going to remain similar so uh, let's reload visual studio it's going to load all of my files and first we'll start with the score the score like it spawns from the top and uh, it just moves down so there is not much logic there so first we'll edit our score and after that uh, we'll edit our obstacle cause it's similar and finally we'll edit our player uh, player is also similar but uh, we'll do it last and finally the spawning logic inside our game manager it's just uh, when to spawn the score and uh, our obstacle prefab <clears throat> so we don't need it to rotate and our move direction instead it is going to be our down direction or we can just directly set the move direction to be down at start but uh, we'll just have it here and we don't need the move direction so uh, we'll also need to delete that and yeah that should start moving our uh, player from top to down so let me check if the script is correct so we have our move speed and our max offset uh, we'll need to change that i mean the value will need to change the spawn positions and random dot range transform dot position and yeah our score is uh, easy and similarly inside our obstacle currently it looks uh, similarly bad uh, let's delete our rotate speed and the move direction and it is going to move in the downward direction so we'll place v3 dot down and uh, inside our spawn positions we are only going to use uh, one i mean one of the two spawn positions which is the left and the right and if it towards the right then we'll flip it scale so that was for the obstacle and uh, our player movement will also need to set up but before that let's see if we set up the values correctly for our prefabs how our game is going to look so for our score what we need to set up is our spawn position and it is going to be spawned at uh, 30 and let's just have zero and then we'll add one so it is going to be at center and it will start at 30 the second one is going to be at 1.28 third one is going to be at negative 1.28 and the final twos are going to be at 2.56 and negative 2.56 so this our player spawning logic similarly inside our obstacle spawning logic let's just set it to zero and first we'll add our first which is going to be at negative 4.8 and 25 and the second one's going to be at positive 4.8 and 25 and again we didn't change uh, any like complicated logic so our game should work still fine just the obstacle spawning conditions are going to be different and as you can see our player movement is not correct so that's why it is going to cause some errors but uh, we are able to get our obstacles running fine and there is also our score spawning 
so let's change the moment for our uh, player and before that we need to uh, upgrade how our obstacle is going to spawn when it spawns towards the right and uh, inside our game manager for our obstacle spawning uh, instead of directly setting up the spawn prefab let's just delete that uh, we are directly going to instantiate our obstacle prefab and spawn prefab will also delete that so the next thing is how we are going to spawn our scores so if unity engine dot random dot range from zero till two is equals to zero so there is only 50 percent chance and uh, we'll create where spawn time to be obstacle spawn time multiplied by 0 0.0 not uh, unity engine dot random dot range so uh let's have a random gap of three to uh three parts so there will be two yeah let's just have a random gap of two so we'll set it two to five so it will be two three and four and we'll multiply it by 0 0.5 so the values for our uh, spawn time are going to be either it is double or it is our obstacle spawn time or it is a value in between so we'll copy this and set up our spawn time and instead of our obstacles uh, spawn time we'll use spawn time and this is for uh, spawning our score so we'll use the score prefab and as both of them are spawning simultaneously for our obstacle we set the expose to be 25 and for our score not exposed the starting y pose and it was set up at 30 so that was our spawning logic and similarly our obstacle uh, when spawned towards the right it was like uh, orientation was different and we also needed to spawn as a different length and we'll need to do that so let's see what we are going to need so move speed max offset no need so after setting our position so first we'll check if it is short and again it is going to be random dot range from 0 till 2 it is 0 and instead of 50% chance we'll give it 33% chance cause uh, it's good to have consistency and if it's short then what we are going to do is uh, let's first get the collider box collider 2d and we are going to change our collider size so call dot size is equals to new vector 2 call dot size dot x minus 1.6f and call dot size dot y and similarly call dot offset is going to be new vector 2 call dot offset dot x minus 0.8f and call dot offset dot y and finally we'll also need to change our uh, sprite renderer size sp s renderer dot size and we are going to set it to our collider size cause both of them are similar and finally if it uh, is towards the right so if transform dot position dot x is greater than 0f then we are just going to change its scale so let's get our scale and temp dot x will multiply it by negative 1f and finally transform dot scale is going to be temp so this is our uh, obstacle condition so i is it short or is it uh, position towards the right 
and uh, our obstacle spawning logic is uh, both are going to instantiate it together but our score is going to be spawned five units higher so it will be in between uh, one of the two obstacles and why is it not using spawn time it is using spawn time unnecessary assignment of a value i know it's unnecessary assignment but uh, uh we need it cause as we are using where i mean we can use a float and not assign it but uh, maybe you need to get the collider or something else so sometime you may need it so that was our obstacle spawning logic and finally we'll change our logic for the player so as you know our player logic uh, it is going to have different set of rules and let's see what we need to delete first so i just randomly deleted and not randomly we need to delete it but uh, we need to see what we want to delete so our player is going to have a move distance and the current move distance and what it is going to need is a, a move speed or rather a move time Mm, we are going to need the move speed and why is it not using let's just delete it and we'll start scratch so current mode distance transform dot position uh this is also going to change this is whole thing is going to change so currently just uh, we have an empty player which uh, does not move but it handles collision with our obstacle and our move clips uh, which also don't need and let's also delete that tag inside our move so this part is uh, different so when it destroys it is going to be called uh, we are going to call the update score function on game ended explosion everything is going to similar now uh, let's set up our variables so we are going to set up before fixed update so let's create a serialized field private float and move time and depending on that move time we are going to create a move speed and serialized field private vector 3 move start pose and our move end pose and after we have our move start and move end we are going to have a move offset and after that we are going to have a move speed uh this speed is like independent of distance it is just going to win you know, one over time because uh, we are just directly using the value from zero to one to calculate the offset and if you want to use a true value you just normalize the value for the offset which is going to be the direction instead of offset you'll call it direction and we'll use the move distance but uh instead of having much complicatedness uh, we'll just directly use it like this and after that we are going to have a private float of current move distance and our move distance is between zero and one and that's actually not move distance that's just a bounce so we are not going to need that so what is going to happen here is we'll just multiply the move speed by negative one f and if our uh, current move distance is greater than one f or our current move distance is less than zero f then again we'll multiply the move speed by negative one f and uh how our position is going to calculate is uh, current move distance it is going to be added the uh, move speed multiplied by time dot fixed delta time and our current move distance is between zero and one so we'll set our current move distance to if our current move distance is uh, greater than 0 0.5 f and we'll set it to 1f as we'll set it to 0f so 
uh, if it is in the opposite direction then it will obviously be less than 0 0.5 f and uh, that should do it and our transform dot position it is going to be equal to our start pose plus current move distance and we'll multiply it by our offset and our move offset is going to be calculated at the start and we also need the move speed so move speed is going to be one over move time and after that current move distance we are going to start from center which is 0 0.5 uh, in between the start and the end and finally our move offset is going to be end minus start and that should be it and if you don't have any errors everything should be working perfectly fine but uh, we'll see how it goes so let's go inside our gameplay scene and first we'll check with our game manager obstacle spawn time let's just uh, have it uh, 0.5 maybe a little bit faster and for our player as we added a couple more variables uh, these are just three our move time is going to be 0 0.4 our start position is negative 4.16 our end position is positive 4.16 and let's hit play and let's see what errors or does it work correctly so as you can see the game is working perfectly fine and still 0 0.5 is a little bit higher so we'll change our game manager spawning time to 0 0.64 and uh, it got finished in half an hour that was pretty fast and that's how you get here with practice and these are just the beginner games so if you try creating the same game over and over again but uh, with different features different uh, set of parameters reusing them understanding your code refactoring it i mean it will take a couple of months but uh, uh, if you are building a final product it would be better if you want to like uh, remove any bugs uh, you know the code better and let's play the game and we'll see how it looks so now it looks uh, a little bit responsive and still we died so i got the score but again still we died so it is still a little bit more difficult uh, if you want to have a good game you need to work on the game mechanics how the player and the score are going to be working but uh, as we got the idea from an online project it's just uh, not even an online project uh, somebody did it on youtube and that's how we created it and you can also get references from different projects i mean uh, all you need to do is uh, convert the movement and the logic to score and an obstacle and everything will be similar and uh, you can like uh, start a pretty complex project uh, with uh, this minimalistic uh, configuration so there are not much animations and uh, maybe you don't even need to have the animations uh, if you want to start something pretty basic and there are just some normal scripts and that was it for this video so if you did like the video do like uh, do like the video and comment it below and there is going to be one more last me uh, one more last video for this uh, uh, playlist and after that we'll be creating a couple of different games most will be of uh, puzzle types cause 2d is what we are going to use and uh, thank you guys for watching do subscribe and like the channel